Ultrasound guidance has been shown to improve patient safety and reduce the duration of many common inpatient and office-based procedures. In this exercise, we will give an overview of three guided procedures that are routinely included in residency curricula, paracentesis, thoracentesis, and central venous line placement. Two types of procedural guidance can be performed, static guidance and dynamic guidance. Static guidance involves using the ultrasound to visualize the area to be injected or aspirated so that the appropriate area for needle entry can be marked. Then the procedure is performed in the usual blind fashion without additional ultrasound guidance. Dynamic ultrasound guidance involves using the ultrasound throughout the process, directly visualizing the entry of the needle into the tissues all the way through into the target structure. During ultrasound-guided procedures, universal sterile precautions are implemented. Standard paracentesis, thoracentesis, and central venous catheter kits are used. Ultrasound guidance can be a valuable tool in clinical situations where smaller volume intraperitoneal free fluid is suspected. The patient should be positioned supine with the abdomen fully exposed. The area to be aspirated may be visualized in the transverse or longitudinal plane using a low-frequency curvilinear probe. The preferred site for paracentesis is the right lower quadrant. This avoids the liver and spleen in the upper quadrants and the sigmoid colon in the left lower quadrant. However, the entire abdomen should be quickly scanned to identify the largest pocket available for aspiration. Collections of acidic fluid will be seen as large anechoic areas. If the fluid collections visualized are very small or are only present in the most dependent areas such as the pericolic gutters, then the procedure should not be attempted at the bedside. The percussion technique of localizing pleural effusion is not 100% reliable. Ultrasound guidance of thoracentesis results in an improved success rate while reducing the rate of complications. A curvilinear low-frequency transducer is ideal for this procedure. The preferred position is to have the patient sitting upright, often leaning forward on a bedside table. But, obtended or mechanically ventilated patients who cannot sit upright can be positioned supine with the head of the bed slightly raised. Central venous line placement has been reported to be safer and more efficient when using dynamic ultrasound guidance. The internal jugular approach is the best studied and most widely used site for ultrasound guided central line placement. The patient is positioned supine in slight Trendelenburg with the head turned slightly. The physician performs the procedure while standing behind the patient at the head of the bed. A linear array high-frequency probe is ideal for this procedure. An initial transverse view of the carotid artery and jugular vein is obtained 2 to 3 centimeters above the clavicle between the two heads of the sternocleidomastoid muscle. The probe should be positioned so that the jugular appears in the exact center of the screen. The goal at this point is to mark the optimum area for needle insertion prior to creating a sterile field. The mark should align with the center of the probe. Using the non-dominant hand, the physician re-images the carotid artery and jugular vein in the transverse view. The needle is inserted at a 45 degree angle to the skin and approximately 1 to 2 millimeters cephalid to the exact center of the ultrasound probe. As the needle is inserted, negative pressure is applied on the syringe. Once the needle has penetrated the vein, the syringe is removed and a guide wire is inserted through the needle. The central venous catheter is placed over the guide wire and into the vein. Ultrasound is then used to confirm the location of the catheter in the vein. Training ultrasound phantoms aid the user in the development and practice of skills associated with ultrasound-guided procedures. These models typically feature a fluid-filled region that can mimic vascular spaces or potential fluid-filled spaces. The synthetic tissue can sometimes be replaced after being damaged by multiple needle sticks.